Hello, everyone. I'm having a chat with Adonis from the Hotep community, and he's going to uh, teach us what Hotep is, because as I as I understand it, it seems to be sort of a counter movement against uh, Black Lives Matter. Is that correct? Um, yeah, that actually would that actually would be a good way to describe us. I guess you could say that we I don't want to necessarily say we started to be uh, the counter movement to Black Lives Matter, but that's what we've ended up having to be because, you know, Black Lives Matter now pushes the narrative on the people of they want us to be victims and they, or they want us to think that we're victims and they want us to think that we're all oppressed and all white people are walking around with privilege that they have above us. And it's just like, that's not really the case, but we are the, the I guess community where we preach, you know, self empowerment and, you know, putting and and taking control of your life so that your life can be like the best that it can be and, you know, believing in yourself and not giving all your power to, you know, other people and, and taking self accountability for your own actions. Right, okay. So okay, <laughs> from the definition you've given me there, I can tell that Black Lives Matter already hate you more than anything. Definitely. You, you you sound like the diametric opposite of these people and what they're asking for. Um, mm -hmm. So how how did this all come about? I mean, how how did you guys find, kind of coalesce into a community? Um, I actually found the community earlier this year through one of the um one of the more like one of the members who's been there longer, um, Ali Shakur. I found the movement through him because he runs a website, uh, Hannibal is at the Gate. And I was reading one of his blog posts. I believe the title of it was I Don't Want to Be Black Anymore. And he was, it was basically, he was describing like the mindset that these people be in, like, or the mindset that these people are in. Like the, the fact that they're running around all day and they think they're, that everybody's oppressed, they think that everybody's victims, they think that no matter what they're going to do in life, that they're always going to pale in comparison to other people. And it was just like, he, it was reading it, and it was just like, wow, I, I really feel the same type of way. Because before I found the hotel movement, honestly, I was a bit neutral between the two, I guess you could say between the, the two sides of the debate. I wasn't really a Black Lives Matter guy per se. I wasn't going to be the one marching and protesting or any of that. But I still was one of the, I guess I was one of the ones who felt like we were like, I was kind of one of the ones who felt like everyone was oppressed and all this other, all that other bullshit. But mm -hmm. I kind of had to open my eyes and realize, like, first of all, I personally can't claim oppression because most of my life I've grown up in mostly black areas. I have had very little experience with, uh, well, I'm not going to say very little experience with them, but for most of my life, I've had a lot less experience with white people than I have with black people. So I can't say that I'm going around being oppressed by them and these people are doing such and such to me because I'm not really around them that much. The only ones that I can really claim are oppressing me are, you know, the 1%, but they oppress all of us. So that's not even a race thing. But with me, I found the community through him and everything. And then I found uh, Handy Mayhem. He makes YouTube videos a lot about different uh, social and political issues. And those are the first two that I found. And they really introduced me to the movement. And they really, like, showed me that, like, one of the main things is to really believe in yourself and believe in what you can do and, and put your time and effort into making your life better and not complaining. Because at the end of the day, you can complain, but once you're done complaining, nothing changed. At the end of the day, you can put in effort, but when you put in this effort, something is going to change because you put in the work to make something happen and to make your life better. Right, okay. That, I, now, I, I have got much more respect for that position than I do for the Black Lives Matter position. And I, I, I always found it really weird that they, they, they think they live in a white supremacy, and then they think um, complaining and asking the white supremacy to do something for them uh, is something that would ever happen. I mean, why? If, if you think you're being oppressed by a bunch of racists, why would you ask the racists to help you out? I just don't get it. You know, <laughs> doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand them. That's like not built for us and all this other stuff. And it's just like, okay, well, if you feel like the system isn't for us, and if you feel like the system is against us. Why are you asking and begging the same system to help you? Why aren't you doing things to help yourself so that you can put yourself in a better position where you don't need to ask anybody for help? Why are you begging these people for their help and asking for these people and then turning around and saying, oh, well, you don't fuck with us anyway. I don't get it. 
Yeah, I, I, I just think, um, honestly, it makes me think that they don't really believe what they're saying. You know, because I mean, if I if I thought I was being oppressed by a bunch of racists, I certainly wouldn't be asking for them for help. You know, so I, I always just get the feeling they don't really genuinely believe what they're saying there. But I mean, maybe they do. I maybe they just don't really think about well, what they're doing. I don't know. I'm not sure. That whole thing goes back to the fact that, and well, this is my opinion. I believe that most of Black Lives Matter are parrots. I believe that they get a popular, uh, there's some popular rhetoric or a popular narrative or whatever, and then they just spin it and they keep talking about it and it just goes on and on and, and everybody believes it. And because they're all part of this collective, they all just have the same uh, uh, hive mind. Like, that's what I say. I've said that a couple times on Twitter before. The difference, one of the main differences that you'll find between Hotep and Black Lives Matter is with Black Lives Matter, when you encounter these people, a lot of times you're finding people that are parroting the same exact points and the same exact rhetoric over and over and over again. It's like talking to a clone of the same person. If you talk to Hoteps, you'll notice that a lot of us, we see differently on issues, but it's at the point where we can agree to disagree and we can talk and hash things out and come to agreements on issues where we're not arguing, and we're not beefing when it comes to politics there are some of us that support trump there are some of us that don't there are some of us that don't even care about the political system in general but we're not gonna attack anybody or we're not gonna you know come at anybody for their political views because just like how is that changing my life what you feel about somebody running for president doesn't really do much to my life so why would i put too much care into worrying about it yeah no i think that's i think that's a much more sensible attitude to have i mean it's it's one that uh, we, I, know, I guess I would say I'm part of a skeptic community, and uh, it's, it's one that's highly valued in the community we're in. Um, so what, what did the sort of Hotep community make of the, specifically the riots and the, the looting and the burning the, what, what, when Black Lives Matter protests? It's, well, I don't like to speak for the whole community because, like I said earlier, a lot of times we have different ideas on, mm -hmm. stuff, on things. But for the most part, a lot of us agreed that it really didn't make any sense because it's just like, okay, you're upset that the police killed this black man. And he, I, um, I'm not sure if the one you're referring... Wait, you said Milwaukee? And well, I, I actually didn't say any particular one because honestly, oh, there, are, there, are, there are loads of them. To be honest, I mean, I, I live in England and I'm watching this from the outside with horror. You know, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but well, uh, but yeah, anyone so you want to talk about, really? Okay, so they look at the situation as well. The police officer killed this black man. He may have been armed or he may have been unarmed. Now, in certain situations, the cop is white. In certain situations, the cop is black. None of that ever matters because it always gets to the looting and rioting. But what we try to say is, what does looting and rioting help? If he killed the black man and you go burn down a neighborhood that has nothing to do with the, the mayor, you burn down a neighborhood that doesn't like, it doesn't put any pressure on the mayor's office to do anything. It doesn't do anything to the police. And I'm not, this is not me advocating to go do out and do like stupid shit to the police because you're mad. But what I'm saying is if you're going to go burn down random neighborhoods and businesses and all of that stuff, and it's not being productive and it's not going to do anything to help your point or to help like the point that you're trying to get across, what is the point of doing it? If like you're going to go out, you're going to root, I mean, you're going to uh, riot, you're going to loot, you're going to fucking steal shit, but it's like, and you're going to burn shit down. But it's like, at the end of the day, you have the potential to either be arrested and go to jail or you can get away with it. But you just caused all this destruction in your neighborhood that somebody's going to have to build, which means somebody's going to have to fix and somebody's going to have to rebuild something, which means that there's going to be, there's going to be like less, there, there's going to help. Are you there? It doesn't make sense. And then it's just like people, say things like well these aren't these communities and blah blah so they're not they're not hurting black people and it's just like well that's not the fucking point it's not it's it's not helping anyone to go burn down buildings and go riot and loot just because you're mad because a cop shot someone and you didn't even get the facts yet they don't even let any of the facts or anything get out they take one narrative they take a couple things that's either thought about or actually known at the time, and then they just run wild with it, and it, it doesn't make sense to me. It's just all, it, it's not, it's not productive. It's not positive. It doesn't do anything beneficial. Yeah, I mean, what, one of the things that, uh, with, was it, what was, what was the latest one? Was it Milwaukee? Yeah. Yeah, the, the latest one. Uh, there were videos going around of 
you know, people, you know, sh- shouting things like, there's a white person, go and beat them, and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I saw the video where the guy, he said, uh, where he said, we're only doing this because the white people have all the money, or the rich people have all the money, and they're not giving us none or something like that. And I was like, do you not realize that's a socialist mindset? Like, oh, yeah. That's technically what that is. I didn't, that, yeah, yeah. Kind of they, me. Yeah, no, they, they very much are. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, the thing that uh, genuinely worries me about this kind of division is that if they set the conversation as being black against white, then you're going to get people on the other side saying, well, I'm white. And I mean, you know, they might not, they they might be like mildly racist or be like latently Mm. racist. But I mean, I think that this really polarizes people and forces them into camps. And I think it will be creating racists where they weren't really racist in the first place, you know, by, by declaring that, I mean, it looks like they're kind of declaring a race war. And so it's just like, okay, I mean, that's going to create racists, right? And then, yeah, but then there's also the fact, and I, I, I've i talked about this before, with everybody running around screaming that everybody's a racist because of every little thing and blah, blah. The people that are actually out there doing racist shit, you know, the people who are actually out there hurting people and mm-hmm. treating people bad because of their prejudice, because of race, they're just getting away with it. They're just, you know, falling through the cracks because it's at the point where everybody's being called a racist for everything. Everybody's being called a sexist for everything. So the people that actually are they're not really be getting they're not really getting dealt with because everyone is being is being labeled under this and you can't really identify who it actually is because we're so used to it being pseudo labeled to people and it's just like well it's just like this type of thing like you said it does create racism because it's like it's making a black and white divide and i see that a lot with black people and black people don't like when i say this they, they often call me a coon or uncle tom or whatever i don't give a fuck that shit doesn't bother me yeah. but it, it's like i see it a lot i've seen it a lot with black people actually where they just genuinely like really hate white people and it's just like I, a couple times i've asked them like you know at what has been your bad experiences with white people you know why do you hate white people so much and they genuinely cannot really give me an answer that like would be like a, a an actual reason for them like a, they a haven't been mistreated by them. Yeah. yeah they yeah. can't give me anything they just say something that sounds like they got it off of twitter and it's just like okay well i mean i can't help you because if you're going around every day and you're screaming oh blah blah is racist oh this is racist but you are a racist nobody's going to pay you any mind what, who's going to listen to a racist complain about racism? Who? <laughs> Nobody. That's a good question. Like, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, okay, yeah, that, that, that's really interesting. Um, have you... I mean, what, one thing I've noticed with Black Lives Matter is uh, the, it's not just the sort of demonization of white people, but it's, it's more the demonization of the police. And I think, I think it's really easy to just say the cops. You know, because that just then that means they're all the same. They're all just like these nameless automatons. They're just the cops, and they're coming to mm-hmm. do bad things. You know, they, they, there's this, uh, this is just constant sort of, it just lumping of a, a, a single label. They must all be the same, and they must all be bad. You know, and I'm not really a big fan of police. I'm I'm the sort of person who thinks mm-hmm. that power definitely needs to be held accountable. And I've seen more than enough videos of cops obviously abusing their power. But then I've also mm-hmm. seen plenty of videos of the, the cops, I mean, well, not just being attacked, but genuinely looking worried. I mean, I, I mean, one of, the, one of the things I worry about is that this is going to just make police afraid of black people, you know? They, they're going to, I mean, you know, do, do they ever ask you whether you're a part of Black Lives Matter? I mean, not whether you have any interaction with them, I don't know. But, like, it, I mean, do you know anything about, like, the re- response of the cops to all of this? Um, well couple things about that question number one when you said that like you're not really a fan of the police i agree and i think it's funny because a lot of people with the with the police they actually think that the job of the police is to you know protect citizens and all that other blah blah and it's like no the job of the police is to enforce the law that's what they're supposed to do they're not required to protect citizens there have been cases in here in the united states where the cops didn't protect citizens and they weren't found at fault for it because that's not what they're supposed to do so when people say things like cops are supposed to protect citizens i find that funny but at the same time 
I don't find it necessary or or even I don't think it even makes sense to demonize all cops because some are bad because that would be the same thing as you know demonizing all Muslims because some terrorists have been Muslims or demonizing Hillary's whole family because she's crooked. I don't really understand. <laughs> like that wouldn't really. It's not really. You can't really do that. So I'm of the opinion where. I don't, I'm not really a fan of the cops either, but I give them the benefit of the doubt until they do something to make me like see that they're one of the bad ones. Just like I do, well, yeah, just like that's how I do yeah. cops. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on totally on that. that that's the, in my opinion, that's just like the rational position to take. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, any, anything you're, else is just bigotry, isn't it? Yeah, you're basically with them, you're innocent to me until proven guilty. But when it comes to the whole matter of um, Black Lives Matter and the police. First of all, I find that interesting because uh, to my knowledge, Black Lives Matter was started after the Trayvon situation. Am I correct? I'm not really... I'm, yeah, I'm, he, I'm, he was the Ferguson chap, wasn't he? Um, I know, he was the young kid, No, he? He, was, yeah. he was in Florida, yeah. Yeah, that was Ferguson. it. Was it was the Mike Brown that was the, the Ferguson one. Oh. Okay, uh, but no, so, I think I think you're right. I think it did start with Trayvon, and then it sort of really exploded with Mike Brown, didn't it? Because I, yeah, I believe it started with Trayvon, and I've always found found that interesting because that situation was spun to be black versus white, even though Zimmerman was, uh, I believe he's Mexican. Yeah, Hispanic, wasn't he? Yeah, mm. but fucking with that situation, that turned there that started i think i believe that started black lives matter and then the whole mike brown and uh and eric garner and all those situations they worsened the police relations between black people and and put and police and then you know the media they don't do a good job at helping because every time something like this happens it's all over the news and it's all over media but I'm I'm not exactly I can't say for sure if it's made the relations worse between blacks and the police, but I can say I'm like 99. Or in my opinion, I would be 100 percent. I would believe it 100 percent because it's just like when you see on the news all the time, unarmed black man gets shot by such and such cop, and people don't take into account like when you think about statistics and you think about like we have an entire country. So when things like this happen in the span of the entire country, there are so many things that happen in this country in a day that like when they cherry pick these type of stories, I always know it's because of a narrative because just like out of everything newsworthy, newsworthy that happened in the country, you chose to throw this in our faces for the next week. You're doing that to push a narrative, and they really they do this to push this narrative that we're victims, and that no matter where we're going, society where we go in society, that there's always going to be somebody against us or somebody hunting us down. And I, they, I don't, I don't understand how people like ration. Well, these aren't rationally, these aren't rational people that think like this. But I don't see how people can rationally like think about this and end up thinking that cops are just going around gunning, gunning us down. Because it's just like when you look at the statistics and when you look at like, you know, what actually happens, that's usually not, if ever, the case. I don't think I've, I can't remember the last time I've ever heard of a news story where somebody was just gunned down by a cop. It's always some some weird, complex situation. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I was, I, I think um, the Washington Post, have you seen these statistics? That they did for the 2015 uh, people shot dead by police. They, they yeah, I think I did. Yeah, they they kept a track, and it was uh, 990 people in total, and out of that, only 93 were unarmed. So it's like, mm. okay, that, I mean, that's that's 10 percent of the entire total that were unarmed. That's that means that most of them are operating, you know, reasonably. You know, I'd, I can hardly blame the police for shooting someone who's armed with a deadly weapon. You know, it's. Mm. <laughs> You know, you, it's, you know, I don't, and like I said, I'm, I'm not a fan of police uh, power in general. I, I think it's something to be genuinely skeptical of. But in that situation, I don't think it's, you know, it's probably warranted. And having a, a small number like that of being people who are unarmed, I mean, you know, there, there may well be problems in certain police forces. Like, I mean, the report, the report in Baltimore came out, and apparently now they're all racist. And I haven't read through it properly yet, so I don't really know. But uh, I can believe that some police departments do have problems, but I mean, the statistics would imply that most of them don't. You know, mo most of it seems just like the cops being authoritarian, really. It's interesting that you just brought that up because in 2015, 
there were uh, a few unarmed black man cop shootings, weren't there? Uh, like that made the news. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There were a few. Yeah, there were a few. But I can't remember there being any where he was armed or where the person was armed. And that is that's that that's where I'm talking about. Or that's what I was talking about earlier with the narrative. When you say mm -hmm. like that, with the number being so little, but yet really the only ones that we really saw that like blew up in the news were the ones that were unarmed. It's just like, well, I mean, you see what's happening. Oh, and you're, you're right when going... you say cherry picking. You're absolutely right when you say it was cherry picking. I mean, it, it literally is taking a tiny selection, ignoring the majority of things that would indicate against what they're trying to say. And then, like you said, it's a narrative and they blow it out of proportion. And then I know somebody is going to try to say to me in response to this that, you know, they do that to bring uh, more or bring more attention to an issue and all that. And it's just like, I mean, that's fine, but it's in the manner of which they do it that annoys me. I don't like the way that they cherry pick these stories and then they try to make it seem like they try to fit it with this narrative that we're all victims and we can't go outside without looking down the street because a cop is waiting to shoot us in the in the back. Like, I don't I, I don't. It, that's what you would really believe reading these news articles and reading these stories about seeing this stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah, totally. Seeing it all the time is just like, I feel bad for the people who are actually like brainwashed for this shit, from this shit. Yeah, me too, man. I, I really, I, <laughs> I mean, imagine if this was all the people around you were ever saying, you know, how, how could you think anything different? You know, if everyone was saying this, you would think that was obviously true. Um, so it's, I think. Oh, sorry, guys. Well, one, one more thing. I think that's part of the reason why that why they um they tend to you know have these like opinions and why they all tend to share these opinions because you notice with these types of people they usually surround themselves with people that are like them or like they usually surround themselves with like yes men. They don't really surround themselves with people that or hang around with people that are much different from them or who like differ from them or disagree with them a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get the feeling that happens. I mean, I've, I've, I've read a few books on it. Apparently, it's called social ghettoization, um, where yeah, they, uh, yeah, where, where they literally just stay with people who just agree with them, and tribalism. You know, yeah, absolutely, it's totally tribal. Um, so you were saying, I, I, I think it's very interesting to talk about the, um, the perpetual victimhood of it because uh, I can't remember who, there was someone famous who got in trouble for saying that the other day. And uh, I think, it, I mean, it's genuinely something that's, it's the most obvious thing about it, in my opinion. And this, this is what I think, um, I, like, this is why I started following Hotep uh, people, because they, they were literally just saying, look, we, we don't have to be victims if we don't want to. We can just get on with our lives and build and, you know, we can make something good. And then, or, you know, regardless of what happened before you were born, it doesn't matter in the here and now. Um, so is, I, I take it this is a common philosophy for the hotel thing. This is what sort of binds it all together, right? Yeah, like we don't believe in blaming the white people that are alive today for the slavery that their ancestors did to our ancestors um, because that's pointless and neither one of us were directly involved in it. Um, I personally, I think reparations is one of the dumbest ideas that, that has like been introduced in this time period because first of all how are you going to determine who gets the reparations are you going to run dna tests to see who it comes <laughs> from actually slave like like actually yeah. is a descendant of slaves and then after that giving people reparations depending on how many it is would likely probably bankrupt this country and it's already in a lot of debt so you know it definitely wouldn't help but it's I don't, uh, I, I guess, I don't want to say that, because like I said before, I don't really like speaking for other people, but for the most part, that is the one of the things that binds us all together and helps us find each other, because a lot of people say, like, I, a, a couple of us used to be actually Black Lives Matter heads, like, they, it was one guy in our, uh, in our group chat, he was talking about, he used to, like, march and protest and that type thing. And it's just like, it's funny seeing people who used to be in or used to be brainwashed in that whole system. And now they see like, you know, you can't go anywhere in life if you're walking around all day being, thinking that you're a victim. Like if you wake up in the morning and feel like a victim, you're going to be a victim. If you wake up in the morning and feel like a victor, you're going to be a victor. And that's just how life works. And 
it's just like it's funny seeing people come from their mindset and come and come see the light and come see that you know you're not going to make your life better unless you put the time and effort in to do it yourself you're not going your life isn't going to get better asking people for help or begging for help your life isn't going to get better complaining the only person you have in life to look out for you is you so you have to do what you can do to make your life better nobody else is going to do it for you and that's one of the that's one of the the main things that like that helps people find hotel, I guess you could say, because that's one of the things that helped mm-hmm. me find that I was impressed by the whole self-reliance and self-accountability. And, you know, uh, like we said, like like I saw on your live stream, when you were talking about this, like we said in the fact um, with the whole racism thing, it's just like you can choose to let that hold you back. But at the same time, if you can, you can also choose to fight against that and, you yeah. know, not let that, push you down and, and quote unquote oppress you and you know you can choose and make your life better but it all comes down to the choice that you want to make and when it comes to people who don't want to be held accountable for their own actions they don't make that choice because they don't have the drive and the push and the will to really you know really succeed and really go far yeah i mean what like like you're saying about the uh the victim mentality it, it you're it does just become a self-fulfilling prophecy if if you continue to say I can't do something. I just can't do something. Then you're not going to bloody try and do something. You know, the only way anything's ever been achieved is by people saying, "Hey, let's try and do this, and we'll find out if we can or not." You know, you, you you've got to put in the hard work to get the results. If you don't, then you obviously end with nothing. You know, I mean, I I saw like uh, Donald Trump's speech uh, being reported on the other day, where he had said to black people, um, "Look, what have you got to lose? You've been living in Democrat-run cities for." decades and they're, they're, they're totally shit and so what have you got mm-hmm. to lose you may as well try and change and then what, what were they saying in response to that what was the, what was the general media narrative because I saw you tweet about it and it, it was great. it's funny because like I, it, it's a tweet that I made like a couple weeks before that describes that situation perfectly I was like uh, people will get mad at like people will get mad at like how you said something <laughs> rather than actually seeing like what you meant by the words you said Mm. and that's definitely what happened with that because i mean what he was saying is the same stuff that we've been saying for a long time (laughs) all who say oh we're oppressed you know our education system is shitty you know our cities are ass then donald trump comes out and he says oh yeah well i see that uh let me get let me offer you a hand and you know you got all these dumb motherfuckers talking about oh you see it? this he doesn't care about black people he just said we're all poor blah, blah. And it's just like, last week y'all were all just saying you're poor and oppressed now we all balling and now we all have money like pick, pick a fucking like which is it like and then <laughs> One of the things that's always attracted me to Trump's campaign is the fact that he hasn't like I've, he's never he's never pandered to us or any other minorities and made us seem like we were defenseless animals and needed help or blah blah. And with that speech, I don't even feel like he was trying to do that. What it sounded like he was trying to do, it sounded like he was trying to say, hey, like you know, you guys are all Democrats. They run all your cities and they're not doing shit for you. Like I'm trying to help you all out. And in response, it was a bunch of dumb niggas talking about, oh, no, well, you got Donald Trump and he's saying black people are poor. And so we don't fuck with him, blah, blah. And I'm just like, well, last week y'all was all just saying that yeah. nobody has money and we all <laughs> oppressed and, and, you know, all our cities are fucked up and shit. Now we all living in, yeah. you know, Dubai-like cities and, and now we all balling. The, the great thing about that is, well, the, the great thing about that is, the sense, so what are you complaining about then? You know, if you right. guys think so great, what's the what's all the Black Lives Matter? What what do you all you know? What do you need rich man's money for? I guess <laughs> it's just like everybody was talking. It's funny because Trump brought out a lot of hypocrisy in people. Everybody was talking about, uh, or people weren't really talking about like the state of America before. And then Trump comes out and he's like, "Make America great again." And then you had people who one week are complaining about oppression and being a victim and all this other bullshit. Next week. These are the same people who are taking anti-Trump stance and going, oh, well, America is already great. I don't know what Donald Trump is talking yeah. about. Last yeah. week, then you just say that you don't even want to fucking live here no more. Then you just say you want to move to Canada. Now, we're great. <laughs> yeah. like, what is, like, what is, I don't I don't get people. I don't really understand people. Like, And it's just like politics is really showing a lot of the hypocrisy in people because it's just funny, like, people who – who like only pay attention to politics and who don't like you know actively seek shit out and you know who research shit mm. like 
they have different they always look at stuff differently like for instance i wrote i'm not sure if you've uh read it but i wrote an article where i basically debunked you know the uh, the huffington post article here's 10 reasons why trump is a racist i haven't actually seen that one no i i'd like well, to it. i'd be interested that, yeah they have their article where it's basically like the de facto you know argument for anybody trying to call him a racist and i went through and i looked at these claims and i wasn't even going to write an article about it at first i just went and i researched the claims because i'm like well if i'm going to support him you know i, I want to know like what this shit is about yeah and when i went and researched the claims that was when i got the like idea to re- write the article because i'm looking up these claims and i'm noticing a lot of it is either he say she say that can't be verified it's mm-hmm. Oh, I feel like he would have treated a white person differently, racism, and I hate that because that's subjective. You can't say just because you feel like somebody would have treated a white person differently that the way they treated somebody is racist. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Totally. And then there was a couple of things. Like, they said he was racist because he was at a, a conference with Jewish people, and he said that the Jews there were good negotiators. I'm like, how the fuck is that racist? Just give them a compliment. <laughs> Like, I was really, I was so perplexed. I was like, who wrote this article? But I I, I wrote an article debunking that. And then when I put yeah. that out, I got, I actually, it did uh, better than I expected it did. Scott Adams, the uh, the creator of Dilbert, he actually shared it. I didn't expect oh, really? that to happen. So it, oh, yeah, awesome. so it kind of, I love it kind of blew up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's actually one of the few comic strips that I read in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, no, he's really good. I've been, I've, I've, you know, I read him whenever I can for years. Um, yeah, that was actually great. Yeah, okay. And then after that, that was like a, that was like a, I didn't get, I, I didn't get that get of a reaction, I guess, to that from people who were like against him because you know they they just go with narratives and they don't actually listen to reason. But people yeah. who actually think rationally, they actually enjoyed it. Yeah, because I mean, I, I I've noticed. I mean, it just seems that everything is ascribed to racism these days. Just mm. like, and I, I to me, it's just become like, like you're saying earlier. You know, it's crying wolf. You know, actual racism is ignored now, because, or at least in some part, because you know people go, "Oh, he's a racist." Yeah, you say everyone's a fucking racist. You know, I I, yeah. I just can't trust your judgment when you make that you know call on someone. Mm-hmm. And um, shit, what was I going to say? I can't remember what I was saying. Now. I sidetracked myself. <laughs> Sorry. It's like a boy um, who cry wolf situation. Yeah, yeah, it is totally. It's it's just um, it devalues the whole thing. And like like you were saying earlier, like with Trump uh, speaking to you without making difference to you. I mean, that's that's being respectful, isn't it? You know, it's it's treating you like an equal, isn't it? You know, rather than being condescending and saying that the black people need special help and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it feels like he looks at us as like. It's like things who, like you know, might not who and he it, 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 he recognizes clearly that we haven't always had like you know the best way in life. Sure. But it's different from people like Hillary who try to treat us like you know we can't do shit and like we're poor defenseless animals. And then she has, and this is I'm not even gonna I, I don't even want to call this like because this is I don't feel like she would have treated a white person this way racism technically. But there yeah. have been a couple instances where like. Black people have tried to approach her about like her different, the uh, you know her transgressions in the past, and she's kind of mm-hmm. like shunned them and shooed them off and that type of thing. And that's always interesting because is I don't well with people in general. I have I've made a couple tweets about it before. Hillary just seems like every time she's around people, she's so irritated and she just like doesn't like people. Like she just doesn't she doesn't like she seems like a sociopath to me. She just doesn't seem like a Honestly, I think yeah, I don't think that's her being racist. I think that that's just Hillary Clinton. I I don't think she likes uh, I you yeah. know the lower orders, just whoever they are. You know, <laughs> from what I've seen, she yeah. just that's man, classism. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. You know, I think I think she probably does think she's better. She's like she got a Clinton privilege, so she she knows that like she exactly. can get away with shit that ninety nine percent of people can't. Yeah, no, no, that's how it is. And but what you're saying, like um. You you feel that she wouldn't be you know act this way to a white person. That's that's her entire fucking campaign when it comes to the black community, though, isn't it? You know, it's like right, I'm going to pander to you because you're not white, because you're black, because you're different. And it's just like what I I, I hate that kind of. It, it's sort of like this unconscious bigotry, and it's well-meaning bigotry, maybe. But it's like, look, would you treat white people this way? No, then just stop it. Just, yeah, um... 
Sorry, you like when she said she was like, um, sorry, you had a conversation for a second. Yeah, but, you, um, you, you broke up a little bit there. Sorry about that. Can, can she, has said, she has said one time in a tweet, she was like, white Americans need to listen to the uh, something about the play our African American friends free or something like that. And I was just like, shut up. Like, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like even, even like the people who are really going through the really bad shit. I'm sure that at the end of the day, who wants to go through bullshit and then at the end of the day, find a, uh, go find a white person and be like, man, let me tell you about my day. Like, that's really how she makes it sound. Like, they need to go find their, go seek out black people to listen to about their problems. Like, it's just like, Hillary, <laughs> shut up. Like, who the fuck wants their, wants your help? And that, how weird would that be as well? Like, I mean, I'm, I mean, it, like, just, it, oh, Christ, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, imagine someone comes up to you and says, well, for me, they'd say, you're white, but like, you know, you're black. Can I talk to you about your problems? You'd be like, mm-hmm. no, go away. Why the fuck? Who the fuck are you? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> Like, why are you, who is this random person trying to talk to me? Like, go away. Yeah. Oh, well, like, I read Hillary Clinton's and tweet. And like, so... Yeah. Like, I'm no, trying it's... to help you. And it's just like, um, help me by voting for Trump. Because you want some bullshit. Yeah, you, you're trying to help me because I'm black. That that makes you sort of like a well-meaning racist, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, by doing stuff like that, you assume that all black people are, like, doing bad. Like, I'm doing fine. I'm, I don't need any help from anybody. I don't need anybody to listen to my problems. Like, but she makes it seem like just because white people are white people and black people are black people, they're automatically doing better than us. And it's just like, uh, no, that's not always the case. Like, see, now that, that actually leads us on to an interesting question because um, I, I, this is this is going to be a silly way of establishing this, but whenever I see Black Lives Matter, they're always like wearing like t-shirts and jeans and they're running around in the streets whenever i see people mm-hmm. from hotep they look like they're wearing like uniforms and normally they do their videos from their cars and i'm thinking mm-hmm. okay so these guys probably have jobs and lives and they're probably getting on with things uh is that is that sort of like a, an actual difference or is it just something in the you know I'm, it doesn't really represent because i mean like a hotep people like usually like employed and getting on with their lives aren't they yeah I, yeah because yeah you can say that because that brings me back to I, I remember when you had us on your uh, on your live stream and you were going over a fact and you were talking about the uh, the question where we answered and we were like hoteps uh, we teach people or we try to get people to be producers because producers are is, is a great way to build a strong community and yeah. yeah and be an employer instead of an employee I know I talk about that a lot and that's one of the that's one of like one of the main things we talk about because one of our main things is financial responsibility. Like economics is one of the main ways to address a lot of the problems that we have now, like today, a lot of things that we have issues with today wouldn't necessarily be that bad. If we focus more on economics and being employers and, you know, uh, building Mm -hmm. like wealthy communities instead of trying to get money and then, you know, and then this is why I don't like this is why I don't like the idea of reparations. Because it's just like if you give black people reparations, they're gonna give all this money right back to the same white people who they hate for being richer than them. So what the <laughs> fuck is the point? Like instead of you know investing in communities and building businesses and you know and doing stuff like that, people get this money and then they want to go buy nice clothes and they want to go buy the nicest car. And it's just like I mean, yeah. that, what money back? What money is that gonna bring you back? Yeah. Like you need to you need to get something with a return of interest or you need to get something like you need to invest. That's what we talk yeah. about a lot, because investing your money, you're going to get your money back. You're going to get more money and then you're, you keep that going. But if you get money and then you keep spending it on material bullshit, it's going to keep leaving. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of material bullshit. You're going to have a little bit of money and you're going to have a problem. Yeah, I mean, that, the thing is, that's not even just a problem for like you know your the black community or something. I mean, that's that's endemic in like in the UK as well. I mean, they they had a G eight summit in Northern Ireland a few years back, and all of the high street town, uh, shops have closed down because of like a you know a huge like supermarket mall thing that's opened up just outside of town. Everyone goes there; cause it's cheaper and stuff. And it's just like they they painted over, they pasted over the uh, the shut down shops with. A, a, a wallpaper that looked as if they were open and it was just like fucking hell you know this the, the, these sort of local communities are just really becoming like run down and the, you know it's it's happening everywhere it's fucking terrible but 
I see it happen in Philly sometimes, so I, I definitely know how it is. Like there, it's a it's the street near my house, and it's kind of like a it's it's like a one of those kind of streets where there are just stores on both sides, mm. and there are a couple businesses on the street that like open and close every few months because the people that like open them can't even like keep them up open. But one thing that I noticed, uh, and there are a couple like neighborhoods like this in Philly, but one thing that I do notice with these type neighborhoods, they don't really like the business, the businesses that are open in these neighborhoods are usually like the same. They're usually hair stores or there'll be like a, a corner store or, or there'll, there, it'll be things like that. There won't be anything like, there won't be like, a, a, nobody started a bank or, or nobody like started a movie theater, like things like this. Yeah. That's one of the main things that I, annoys me. Like a lot of, there's not really that much diversity in, well, I can't speak for all of our communities, but in my communities, there isn't that much diversity when it comes to the businesses owned. And then the only ones that, like, when I do see these bigger businesses, they're one of the the franchise brands. You know, we have the PNC, we yeah. have the uh, we have the Starbucks, and mm -hmm. we have like stuff like that. And there are a few black-owned businesses, but at the end of the day, and I don't I don't want to say black-owned businesses like uh, I don't like appreciate white people in the business. No, 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 I I, I don't care that much. But it's just yeah. like in the community, it's kind of like sad seeing the same type of stores open on the same street, like right next to each other. And then I know one of them is going to end up having to close down because, you know, they're not all going to get customers. And it's kind of sad seeing the lack of variety in these communities when I go around. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, the you know, the, obviously if you, there are like five hairdressers on a the street, there's no point opening a new one, is there? Um, okay, since, since we're on the subject, uh, what's the deal with weave? <laughs> what exactly do you mean? Well, well you see, we, we don't. Uh, I mean, we don't have weave over here. Um, uh, well, I mean, they they might do, but I I'm, I just have no idea what it is, what it's about. But you never see anyone talking about weave. Um, I've seen a few videos of people complaining about weave, and uh, is it? I, I I've heard that the weave um, industry for black communities is surprisingly um, big. And so what what is weave? What's the deal with it? What what is it for? I mean, is it just hair extensions or something? Or, um, to popping? my knowledge, basically, yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I don't. I don't really like necessarily the uh, know like or really try to understand that much about like women's hair. I just know right, like okay. if I like. I just know if I like it, like and how I like it. But uh, to my knowledge, that's really what it is. But I'm. I couldn't actually tell you i just know like from personal right. experience that like from my personal experiences black girls love weave i'm not really exactly sure why yeah it's a woman thing okay i understand because uh yeah no no, no i was looking at just like i i saw this video of this woman going saying saying something about how they need their weave or something and i'm like what oh wait are you talking about from the riot yeah so, uh i think it's yeah. Milwaukee. yeah i saw that video and i was i i was like that when I saw that video, it made me think of like a minstrel show. I was like, "Are you a fucking caricature of a of a black ghetto girl? Like, how are you on the news talking about we need our weaves? Like, are you fucking serious? Like, <laughs> like out of everything you need, y'all are over there burning shit down. Like, people's houses are getting burned down, and businesses get burned down, and you're talking about you need weave? Yeah, that's that's why I had to ask. You know, I was just I I honestly I I couldn't believe that was priority number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see the hype over it. Uh, I don't. No, I, I don't get it. But uh, okay, so okay, so um, one thing I think um, the, I mean one of the one of the problems I have with Black Lives Matter is the people they choose to defend seem totally indefensible. Um, is I mean is that is that anything that the Hotep community might agree with, or like you know other people in general who agree with that? Or I mean, not I don't want you to like you know mm -hmm. represent them or anything, but like as your description of your interaction with the community. Whoa. We have, something? yeah, a few of us have noticed that, though, like, when it comes to the people that they choose to defend, there are, there have been quite a few of them who have had, like, questionable pasts. Like I said earlier, well, when it comes to the whole fact of we live in a nation of millions of people, like, so many things happen a day. 
that that injury that most likely wasn't the only situation of that caliber that happened in that time period. So mm. I always find it kind of interesting when they find questionable people to defend. And it's just like, I'm not going to say like somebody's a bad person because they've made some mistakes in life because, you know, everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody has mistakes. But there's a difference between someone making a couple mistakes and then, you know, doing better and getting caught up in a bad situation and that ended up happening to them and somebody with a history of like doing bad things. And these are the people that they tend to like, you know, go hard and fight for it. And I've noticed that a lot and I'm, I don't exactly, I, I can't figure out why that would be the case. I honestly think it's just because these are the ones that the media chooses to bring to light. Like, uh, yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, like I said earlier, the whole narrative thing. Yeah, I mean, and it's, I find it the weird. I mean, the Milwaukee, was it the Milwaukee ones where it was a black police officer who shot an armed black suspect? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, where's the racism? What are we talking about? What? <laughs> and then, besides that, I think it was Baltimore that had, um, a black cop in a majority black police force and, yeah. you know, a black mayor and all of that other stuff. And it's just like, oh, okay, well, y'all were screaming so much shit about racism in Baltimore, but they're all black. And then yeah. I, I heard people say stupid shit like, well, you know, when you get into the government and the police system, then you become racist against black people because the white uh, is in the indoctrinate uh, racism or I can't even like come I can't yeah, even yeah, remember yeah. the stupid shit they, 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 they turn you into a white supremacist even if you're black yeah and it's just like <laughs> how stupid do you have to be to believe some shit like that well you know I think that they I think that when they say white supremacy I don't and, and the fact that they say that you know obviously a black person can join the white supremacy I can honestly say I don't think they're talking about skin color I think they're talking about like just the method of doing things the structure the system itself you know, I think you could use any other word instead of white and, you know, like the, the, the sort of totalitarian system or something. And that, that, that's kind of what they're trying to say, I think. I mean, because otherwise you can't say a black person is part of white supremacy. That doesn't make sense. You know, they're part of, I think they're more, uh, when they say stuff like that, I kind of, I believe they're mostly saying like these people are like puppets. Like yeah, they, they're yeah. like the the authoritarian authoritarian regime of white supremacy is using these people and brainwashing them, and, blah. and it's just like, I mean, you, you can say that, but at the end of the day, if you can't really like support it in any way that makes sense, then it just sounds like you're just saying bullshit. And a lot of the times today, when people like address issues, they just say a lot of bullshit. That's why yeah, I find I mean, it hard to listen to a lot of people because it's just like you have to sift through a lot of bullshit to actually, you know, make sense of things. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I, the idea that a, a white supremacist system could let a, Obama become president is absurd. I mean... I said that, I said that like the other day, I was like, yeah, like we live in so much of a white supremacy that we have a black attorney general and we have a black president and, you yeah. know, like how... I don't know. I mean, how? I, the, this is why I think that when they say white, they mean they, they mean it as like a social construct instead of the race. You know, they, they mean it as like a, a, a series of actions that you do. And I think that what they mean is sort of like being self-reliant and, you know, being responsible for your own actions and believing in your own agency. You know, I, I think they think that's uh, whiteness, quote unquote. And obviously, I think they think not doing that is blackness. And it's, I mean, this just, I mean, I can't really rationalize, I can't really explain it any other way. You know, I can't make it make any kind of sense. And I refuse to believe these people are all just lunatics. You know, there are too many of them for them to be mentally, ha you know, fucking insane or something. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. This. You know, I don't know. Um, so, what else, um, what else is there that, about Hotep that you think people should know? Um, well, for the first thing, I want to say, I want to get out of the way that, you know, contrary to popular belief, we're not uh, sexist, misogynist, homophobic, <laughs> blah, blahs, because, you know, we get that a lot. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let's let's stop on that for a second then, because um, a few years ago, I took part in a consumer revolt against the uh, video game media called Gamergate, and that's exactly what they said to us. And a few years before that, there was a big schism in the atheism community 
uh, mm -hmm. because of this sort of attitude. And they, the first thing they would do is call the people who were opposed what they asked for racists and sexists and misogynists and all that. Um, and I, this is something that's happened to the Hotep community, is it? Yeah, because it's just like when people see like Hotep people, they expect for us to represent Hotep in 100% of everything we do. And it's just like people people act like we're not allowed to like joke around and you like, and, and you know, like be sarcastic about things. And yeah. if we joke about anything, you know, be sarcastic about anything, people tend to easily take things out of context. And that's usually where the whole, uh, the whole stuff about us being homophobic or sexist or whatever comes from. Cause somebody will see like a tweet that was made to be a joke or satire or something like that mm -hmm. and take it seriously. And, I'll just be like, well, number one, this is Twitter and this is just tweets. So if you really think that Twitter is representative of 100% of a person's whole life, you need to reevaluate that because I've seen plenty of people who go on Twitter and, you know, be or and are different people than the person that they are in real life. Yeah. So yeah. you can't always do that. But it's just like, that just goes to show how pussy everybody is nowadays. You can't joke <laughs> around. You can't, you can't like, make light of situations you can't do anything satirical because somebody's going to get offended and like i say all the time offense is taken not given and people take offense to everything nowadays and it's at the point where it's just like i personally i i stopped caring like a like a while ago if people keep taking offense to the things that i say and the things that i do because it's just like somewhere out there somebody's going to get mad and somebody's going to take offense to it because that's just how people are, are wired to do nowadays. People are... I think you've cut out a bit there, man. Thing ...about somebody taking it out of context and, and, yeah. and, like, trying to make you seem like somebody you're not. But then again, I don't really pay too much too much mind because number one is just tweets, and number two, I'm not... I know I'm yeah. not any type of sexist, misogynist... Yeah, yeah, but, I mean... That... Blah, blah. Yeah, that's that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, one thing I, t I tell you what, man, we're, you, you're fucking singing from my hymn sheet here because, like, th this is something that we have seen in so many different communities, and it's exactly the same. Like, it, they attack you in exactly the same way, you know, like you know, calling you sexist and misogynist and all this, and it is they're exactly the same wherever they go. They they can't take a joke. They just cannot. Take you know a what joke. I call it? It's a virtue signaling rallying cry. They say it, and then <laughs> everybody who like is pussy like them and who is on their side is gonna run and take take their side. And you know, yeah. oh look at this sexist right here. Look at this racist blah blah. And it's just like shut the fuck up. Like yeah, it's like I'm blowing a trumpet for the army to assemble, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. fucking oh quick, everyone who is on my team, come over here and support me by calling this person a racist. And then it'll just be like it's a Twitter war. Like you're you're literally trying to start <laughs> a Twitter war where you're typing words over your phone that I'm gonna see on my phone screen and I'm just gonna laugh and it's just gonna be like, Okay, like yeah. you call me a racist. Now at like I, I just feel like when it comes to Twitter and all that shit, it, there's no point in really like doing all this accusing because it's just like, Okay, you call me a racist. What do we do from here? Yeah, what what now? does that mean? Do I delete my account like, or <laughs> right like like, do I have to go delete myself because I'm a rich? Like, where, where do we go from here? Yeah. And it's just like, when you get to that point, is people don't know what to do. So it's just like, what is the point of going around yelling, oh, he's a racist, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you're going to call them out on it, they're going to continue doing it, and that's just how the day is going to go. Like, yeah. So, um, okay, so I take it, um, You did you say earlier that there were a bunch of articles written about Hotep? By the sort of the, the sort of media that supports Black Lives Matter. <clears throat> yeah, we have had if the first probably two pages of Google honestly are like slander articles written about us. There's been, um, I believe Ebony wrote about. It. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I know uh, one of the editors at Ebony. She talks shit about us a good amount. But there have been quite a few different uh you know little media sites some of them are actually known and some of them are you know unknown just trying to get a name off us but there have been quite a few people who've written written slanderous articles about us but it's just like these people are people who i've never seen interact with us or you know mm -hmm. try to ask us for these people never ask us for our point of view on things it's just like they see taken out of context or they see some people calling us homophobic blah blah and then they just go along with it and they go write something trying to look good or trying to look cool for their friends but it's just like 
you're trying so hard to be a journalist, but you're being an unethical journalist because you're not even trying to get the full story. You're just trying to push your narrative. And it's like, for all this, you might as well have just went and made a WordPress blog and did it on there because that's about as much as it amounted to. Man, that, that right there is the exact reason Gamergate happened. The, the gaming press got taken over by these people who went around calling everyone racist and sexist. And it got to the point where everyone was just like, to the point where it's like, look, you're not even doing journalism. You're just, you're just sat in your offices getting things that appeal to your narrative and then calling everyone who disagrees a terrible person. You know, this isn't journal. You're, you're not being honest. You're pushing your agenda, you know? Like most of the articles that I read nowadays, I just read it and I'm just like, imagine going to college for four years for journalism and writing this. Like, it's just so sad. Like some of the stuff people write. Well, you know, like, I've got then, some good news for you on that, actually, because I just Googled Hotep to see what came up. And yeah. the first page and a half was all positive stuff. I had to get halfway down page two to find the first sort of negative article, right? And it starts with, um, Hoteps hate black women. That's the <laughs> very first line. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I see exactly what you mean. <laughs> the, the article's titled... Black women must avoid hoteps at all costs, and here's my tips mm. how to spot them, like your thought criminals or something. Good God, yeah, that's like, brilliant. And it's just like it's funny because people say all that types. People like will will sit down and write that, and it's just like you just took the time out of your day to sit down and write this article, trash on us, and we're all gonna gather around and laugh at you. And <laughs> then, then other people, they're the pe only people that really take this stuff seriously, honestly, are the people who are already against us. Most of the people that I see who either don't know who we are or are neutral on us, like once they start actually paying attention to what we really say and not what <clears throat> not what you know the media is saying about yeah. us they say they see that we're actually makes make we actually make sense and we're yeah. actually making like valid points and we're not just saying bullshit oh, honestly we had exactly the same problem with gamegate um we we were literally like look, look these these journalists these sites they call themselves journalists and they don't have code of ethics and if they do have code of ethics they're not standing to it uh, we even got the society of professional journalists involved and they held debates and whatnot over it um, and basically, all of these sites ended up getting their ethics policies, and they all ended up being, you know, the, the SPJ came down on our side on the issue, and there we are, you know, that totally vindicated what we were talking about. We weren't just all, you know, we didn't just hate women, believe it or not, you know? And, um, yeah, it's, but the thing is, it's quite harrowing for a lot of people, I think, you know, to be told that they're just hateful people by, like, and when you've got, like, you know, say, like, a dozen people on Twitter saying to, like, the average person, just, like, oh, you're actually a sexist if you think that this is, you know, wrong. I mean, mm. I think that really affects them, man. Yeah. I think it's enough to and keep them in the argument. With weaker people, like, it's, it's bad to do that to them because you can actually have, like, people thinking that they are one of these ways and they, like, yeah. <clears throat> they aren't. Like, you have people going around falsely believing that they're actually, like, sexist or something like that, and that's not the case. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, I mean, we've, we've seen, we've seen fucking these people in videos where they're, they're, they're literally, I mean, you can tell that they think they've done something wrong. And, I mean, like, I've, I've seen, like, these really skinny white guys, you know, like the skinny nerdy guys with, like, a, a, a scruffy beard and glasses telling me how they oppress black people. And I'm like, dude, you're not oppressing anyone. You're, you're probably barely able to walk under your own power. You're not oppressing anyone. Jesus Christ. You know, it, this, it, it's the scariest kind of self-hatred. You know, it's, I feel sorry for them, to be honest. Yeah, and it's... Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. And it's, it's, yeah. Like it's, I, an, I, it's just like brainwashing. Yeah, I, I think it is, you know, and it's, it's taking advantage of their better nature, isn't it? You know, they want to be a good person, and you're telling them they're actually a bad person. They're going to do what you want to try and make, you know, to try and get into the good category. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a way of controlling people and stuff like that. I really, I really can't stand it. It's it's so dishonest. But um, right. So is oh, sorry, gone. No, I was just going to say uh, a lot of people just do shit nowadays to try to look like a good person to other people because they care too much what other people think. Yeah. Yeah, and then they honestly, these are these are always the people who act in the worst ways as well. When they say, "Oh, I'm fighting for a higher cause, so it's okay if I do something horrible to you," and it's just like, mm -hmm. uh, "Yeah, no, that, that that means you're just a bad person." 
you know. Yes, you have so, no rules. Yeah, yeah, no, no scruples whatsoever. Um, right, okay. So, is there anything else we should know about Hotep? Um, hmm. I pretty much covered most of you know where where the where about self empowerment. Oh, mm-hmm. one thing I do want to cover about the whole because when people I see this like uh, as a joke a lot when people talk about Hotep, they see like the connection to ancient Egypt and they think that all you know, we talk about is Egypt. And I just want to make that clear that that's not the case. Like me personally, I know like the history of it and all that, but it's just like unless it's something that I can like apply to my life today, it's not, it's not something that I'm really going to spend too much time talking about. Cause like yeah. I'm a history buff. I, like when I was in school, I used to read, uh, through, I used to read the social studies textbook with the uh, parts with the wars. Those used to be my favorite parts, Me but too, it's man. just like, I'm also like, I'm also like a, a realistic type person. So I'm spending my time and spending my life doing things to make it better. So if the information that I have isn't, applicational to real life or anything like that then why am i talking about why am i spending my time you know really like really discussing it if i can't use it for anything so that's why i I don't talk about that too much and a lot of us don't really talk about the whole egypt Mm -hmm. connection that much like we explain it but it's just like we're not that's not really one of the things that is one of our main things it's just like a i guess you guess it's just like a correlation Right, okay, because I mean, I I'd never even heard that allegation. You know, that all you do is talk about ancient Egypt or anything. Um, if anything, it seems to be the other way around. It seems to be people on the sort of Black Lives Matter side who talk about ancient Egypt and and you know whatever on their side. You know, they 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 don't seem to have an accurate view of history, to be honest. Yeah, um, because with Black Lives Matter, Black history started at we were slaves, but you know they don't remember anything before that. They don't yeah. ever want to talk about when we was, uh, you know, kings. We was kings. They don't ever want to talk about that. Yeah, but um, okay. So yeah, um, so I've got your Twitter handle in the uh, name of this video. So if people want to look you up on Twitter, they can. Is, is there anyone else you'd recommend? Um, I definitely recommend talking to uh, Ali Shakur. His Twitter name is at Vipa. Uh, so at, at, at what? Sorry. At Vibhi, V I B E H I. Uh, I would recommend talking to Handy Mayhem, uh, Uncle Hotep, H A N D Y M A Y H E M. And then for the for a little bit on the uh, female perspective of Hotep, I definitely recommend talking to Shar. Her at is. I believe it's Char Mille- It's C-H-A-R-M-E-L-O-D-R. And then I'll, I'll DM all yeah, of them anyway. Yeah. So it, yeah. yeah, I'll DM them all to you so it's easier to find them. But I definitely recommend talking to them. Yeah, okay, Especially uh, Char if you want to get a female perspective. Yeah, yeah, I know. She follows me on Twitter, actually. I'll uh, follow her back and see if I can get her own at some point. Because it's really, really interesting uh, talking to... Communities who, uh, you know, just other communities who have had the same interactions with these sort of, and it's, it, you're absolutely right. You say it's like talking to clones. You know, they've all got the same opinions, and you know exactly mm-hmm. what, all as soon as they as soon as they start going off, and you know that you're ta- dealing with a person who thinks this way. You know everything they fucking think. You know, you know everything. You can predict they think. what they're going to say next. Like. It, exactly. It's almost like a joke at this point. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see how other communities of just like normal people have dealt with these people, and because I mean, as far as I can tell, all I, I try to speak to as many of these other communities as possible, and most of them are just like fairly normal people. You know, they're just like normal people. They just they just aren't like fucking psychos like these people. But um, but okay, yeah, right. Um, thanks for coming on. It's been really interesting. I appreciate you for having me. No problem at all. And uh, thanks to everyone for listening. See you later.